My name is Dale Campbell and I'm going to be demonstrating some basic percussive guitar techniques to you today. Now these should just be viewed as a stepping stone to moving on to more complicated techniques where you're going to be crossing over your hands, um, doing some tapping on the fretboard, that kind of thing. Before we start, uh, as with any type of percussive uh, technique that you do on the guitar, you do run the risk of actually damaging your instrument doing this. Now you can see various marks on my guitar and I've accepted that that's going to happen. But you can crack the top of your soundboard if you're not careful. Um, I've had reinforcements put in under the top of the soundboard just here uh, in order to actually counteract some of the bashing that I do on there. But um, if you're going to be doing this a lot you might want to look into ways of reinforcing it or just be very careful and don't hit it too hard. First technique we're going to start off with is basically just looking at uh, the different parts of drum kit. So first of all we're just going to look at a kick drum, bass drum, and you can get this various areas on the uh, top of your soundboard. Different guitars are going to sound slightly different where you hit them, so you're going to have to experiment with your guitar a bit to see what sounds best. I tend to go for something around here most of the time, and you can get quite a convincing kick drum sound just here, just above the sound hole, or just here, actually on the um, bridge of the guitar, the saddle of the guitar just there. You have to be a bit careful just here because some um, pieces, uh, saddle pieces just here, are actually quite sharp on their edges, so you can hurt your hand a bit uh, on the wrist if you do that too much. Um, also, the um, nut piece, uh, sorry, saddle piece just here is actually on some guitars quite sharp, so if you do that quite a lot, you're going to end up with uh, maybe little cuts, little bruises. So either, if you're uh, daring, take a bit of sandpaper to your guitar and just sand that down, make it a bit smooth. This guitar, as it happens, has a nice smooth saddle and bridge just there, so it doesn't really hurt my hand when I do that. The other place that you can get a kick drum is down the bottom of the guitar just here, or actually on the top just here, so you get something like this or something like this. Now the tone is going to vary from guitar to guitar, but basically you get a slightly bigger sound down here and a slightly tighter sound, I would say, around this area of the guitar. Now the next part of the drum kit we're going to look at is snare drum type sound. Now there are lots of areas on the guitar where you'll get a, a really snappy kind of snare drum sound. Around the bottom of the sound hole just here on top of the soundboard, you're going to get quite a good one. Also, actually underneath the guitar just here, I'm just going to move that around so you can see that, you can get quite a good sound tapping your fingers underneath just there, like so, or using your nails when you go underneath like that. That gives a bit more of a um, sharp edge to it. So with your fingers or with your nails. I tend to use my fingers just there, mainly because um, at gigs I really go for it and I tend to break my nails if I'm not careful with that and they just snap straight across um, the end of the nail and then whenever you come to play you're going to be finding it very difficult to actually um, hit the right notes if your nails aren't there so I tend to go for my fingers but nails you can get a bit brighter sound. Now you can get other snare drum sounds with your left hand and indeed with your right hand in different places those are just the main ones that I use so have an experiment around and like I said at the beginning it's going to vary from guitar to guitar so you might find something that sounds great on your guitar that doesn't actually work on anyone else's. Now the next sound we're going to look at is actually a, a cymbal type sound which is hi-hat you can't really simulate um, the sound of uh, a brass hi-hat on a guitar, but you can give a tiny bit of the sound of a hi-hat just opening and closing by clicking the strings down against the end fret just here. Now I happen to have a pickup in the sound hole just here, so the strings when I push them down actually click against the pickup, but um, if you don't have that it'll just click against the end fret just there. Now that sound sounds a bit like this. And that can also um, work as a snare drum replacement, and we'll talk a bit, a bit about how to um, arrange songs using this technique later on. But suffice it to say, that will work as a hi-hat sound or as a snare drum sound. Now if we just put each of those together in order, so we get uh, bass drum just there, snare drum just there, and a hi-hat just there. And if we um, reverse that a bit so that we get um, something like hi-hat, snare drum, bass, like that, or even bass drum, hi-hat, snare drum. Now the bass drum, hi-hat, snare drum is actually a very, very popular drum beat. You're going to hear it in songs like um, Billie Jean, uh, Niles Barkley's Crazy, that's got a drum beat like that. So if you just practice going through that, bass, hi-hat, snare drum, hi-hat, bass, hi-hat, snare drum, hi-hat, and you can speed it up it. It's fairly effective. Now obviously in those songs you have a chord part happening as well, and we're going to look at putting a bit of a chord part in later on in the lesson. There are various different um, ways that you can twist that around a bit, so right in the middle where you have the hi-hat sound, you can actually double up the hi-hat, so if you go... Or you could even double up the bass drum, so you get... 
or any other combination you could think of. So go out and listen to some drum beats and see if you can replicate them on the guitar. And if you hear something in a song you like, see if you can get a rough sort of sound going with just those bass drum, hi-hat, snare drum, hi-hat beats around there. You could also triple up some hi-hats there. Now that's kind of like bouncing on a trampoline. You've got the strings here and they've got a bit of tension in them. So what you can do there is just bounce up and down really quickly. And it's a bit difficult to explain, but you bring your hand down and you hold quite a lot of tension in your hand as you come down and it just bounces on the strings and bounces them therefore against the bottom fret or the pickup just here. So like that you just get a chick -chick sort of noise. So if you um, work that into the rhythm that we had a second ago, bass drum, hi-hat, snare drum, hi-hat, you get something like this. Okay. Now, all of that's great, but uh, unless you're actually going to be adding some chords in, it can get a little bit uh, boring and you might start to wonder, why don't you just do it on a drum kit? What you can do is as you come down to do a bass drum hit, if you're doing it somewhere around here, obviously you can't do it if you're doing it down here, if you're doing it somewhere around here, you can flick your fingers out as you come down, so it's kind of an explosion on the guitar. As you come down, your hand hits the soundboard just there, your fingers shoot out and strum the strings, so you get a hit and a strum at the same time, something like this. Um, I'm going to be playing a C minor chord in third position here, but you could just try this with open strings to start with. Okay, now that hit is actually the beginning of um, Nars Barkley's Crazy, and if you went through the whole chord sequence, you'd actually find that um, you can mostly get the chords in the right places and play the drum beat at the same time. So you get something like... That's going to take a bit of practice to get used to actually doing that explosive hit as you come down, but it's really important to work on that because that's the only way that you're going to get um, some of those chord parts happening with some of the strumming sections um, and the percussive sections going at the same time. So working on just those simple beats to start with and then moving on to doing just some basic strumming, you can have the um, strings open as you do it, or you could mute the strings just with the left hand. And that in itself could be a nice drum beat. So you can get the idea, you just experiment with these various different movements and then you can move on to putting different areas of the um, body and also add in different parts with your left hand. We're going to look at that a bit more next time. So for next time, work on the drum beats and then see if there's anywhere on your guitar where you get a particularly nice sound. Now there's loads of different areas of the guitar that are going to have different tonalities just because of the way the guitar is constructed. Um, you might find it's particularly nice, for example, to work on the top sort of shoulders of the guitar around here. You can get some nice hits with the left hand there as well, or the right hand, or even something up around the top here. You get some nice work through your nails, and you get lots of different tones all the way across the side of the guitar just there, and also just whacking it with your thumb or something. And again, as well as damaging the guitar here, you could also damage your hand if you crack it down onto the side of the guitar or something on your knuckle, it's going to hurt. So take it slow, work out where your hands are going to be moving before you do any of this. But just as an example, on the top just here, you get quite a nice round resonance sound. It's a bit more of a full snare sound, if you like, uh, so maybe from a deeper snare rather than a really thin snare sound. So experiment with that. See you next time.